Hello, good afternoon and welcome to the Ulti.tv coverage of the World Great Grandmasters Beach Ultimate Club Championships here in Villa Simio, Sardinia, Italy. My name is Ali Thomas. I am joined by the delightful as ever Benji Rees and this is uh, Gaul from Germany versus Flash who are hailing from Great Britain. This is a pool play game from this afternoon. Um, we should be starting in just a few minutes. Yeah, teams are ready to go nice and early though, which is good to see. Uh, so a little bit of context, this is the second game of the day for these sides. The way the format works is that each team has one morning game. There's a lovely long lunch break, from which I've seen a few teams uh, make their way to the bar area, which is fair enough. And then uh, you play one game in the afternoon as well, so it's a nice manageable schedule for everyone involved, including us. Uh, not a great start to the day for both these sides. Uh, both were playing in the first game slot, which was 9.30 in the morning. Uh, Flash went down 12-6 to Man Down, and Gaul, or Gaul sorry, lost 12-13 to Team Finland. So both teams hungry for a win. Uh, so we've got Gaul coming out on offense. Looks like the Flash team are playing a zone. It is quite windy here. You can probably see the flags fluttering in the background. Um, and it has caused a turn, although it looks like there's going to be a call on the field. Yeah, a foul call, just kind of coming in there to try and get the disc, but maybe making contact in doing so. Yeah, the wind has definitely picked up from this morning, a bit more like we had yesterday, though obviously no one here knows that, but it was. It, but trust me, it was windier, and we did see both of these sides practicing a bit of zone in their in their little inter-team inter scrimmages before, no, intra-team scrimmages before this game. So I expect that to be something that we see as this game develops. Oh, and a big floaty disc upwind and snagged away by Flash who are looking to start the game off with a break. So this is Hode on the disc. We've got a sideline look, but now looking for a dump. Oh, and there's going to be a stall out call, but the disc sails out anyway. Very much a high stall and let's just punt it because someone might get it. And if they don't, which they probably won't, at least we're getting some yardage with that. But I must say, after a couple of seconds, everything seemed to get very stagnant and static there mm. for Flash. There wasn't a huge amount of movement, and you can maybe say, you know, turn and isolate a reset a bit earlier, but you know, on a high stall, you may as well get rid of it because you know what the result of a stall out is, and it's the, <laughs> the other team getting possession. So you may as well, you know, try something. Uh, yeah, interesting. It looks like maybe the stall out was retracted uh, to have the turn on the end zone line, but uh, either way, that is a pull which is, don't, I don't know if it came in at all, really. It's difficult to tell when it's on the far sideline because you know, we're not quite underneath it and from our angle, because we're sat down on the sideline as well, it is difficult to tell, but clearly thinking maybe the best way to get past that zone was to hug their way through it. Mm. Uh, the, wind had, the wind had other, uh, uh, the wind had other ideas. <laughs> Definitely not a bad strategy, you know, huck your way out of a zone, but uh, sometimes the wind doesn't want to help you with that. Um, as we can see, oh gosh, another high disc going up and uh, looking at each other, seeing if it's foul, all good. So we've got Hode on the disc. I like that, just a little, everything good? <laughs> yep, okay, off we go. Swing around to Baker. Looks like Gaola doing a more matchy, uh, matchy look, and that's an unfortunate uh sort of wind turn there just kind of blowing it towards the sideline so gaul with another chance distler to kuka nice upfield to damley and they're knocking on the door of the end zone now this is till oh can't quite connect with distler no discussion all looks clean um I mean, you're really seeing the effect that the, that the wind's having on this pink Euro diff. 
the fact that it's pink and it's that like, has nothing to do with it. it just, but yeah, like it, clearly you're seeing that everything is a little bit uh, less easy than it was before. There's another hug this time. This is it's quite an I'd call this agricultural ultimate in that it's it's kind of grindy. It's it's not necessarily the most attractive, but you know, playing a field position game in these windy conditions is often strategically the best move, and players with this experience will know that. Yeah. You know, those uh, classic uni tactics of Huck and D, you know, still relevant to the great grandmasters. Yeah, the last thing you want is to turn it over on your own end zone or on your end zone line and give a team a short field to work with where, you know, they've only got one throw to worry about contending with the wind. That was a really, really nice put to uh, Damley there. He's back on disc. And I think both teams are starting to uh, be a bit more cognizant of where they're releasing the disc. There's some more lower more zippy throws, trying to contend with these blustery conditions. They've got Damley back on disc. I think maybe a foul on the throw from the thrower, saying that maybe he was trying to create separation with that arm, just mm. pushing the defender away on the force. So I think it's Fritz who is engaged in discussion with Flash. Quite a, quite a slow first point so far, but maybe when the wind is, you know, is kicking up a bit, that's not necessarily un, unsurprising. No, definitely not, and I'm very glad I'm not playing in these conditions. It looks really tough. Yeah, it's one of those things where, I mean, we're saying it's kind of strong for us, but obviously we're not out there throwing, and I'm sure, especially when you've got a defence kind of staring you in the face, it's even harder than that. So it looks like... The disc is being held out for a tap-in. There's still some discussion on the flash side. It's taking a little second to wipe, all the, wipe mm. the sand out of the disc as well. Mm. Because I'd much rather do it now than when a stall count's set on. OK, we're back in. Uh, so a dump to Kuka. Nice swing round to Distler. Oh, wow, excellent fake there. <laughs> it just knocks the defence over. Back to Kuka. And that is not in. Uh, there seems to be some confusion. Well, well, one of the players for Flash has walked away, so I think he was saying, yeah, that's fine. Okay, all right, but I think a miscommunication there. <laughs> didn't, yeah, didn't see a nice big, you know, hand signal to signal it, but first point of the game goes Gowell's way. And uh, he's just walked off the disc with the pitch now. Walked off the pitch with the disc, there we go. Oh, yeah, I was like, oh, well, that doesn't sound, <laughs> doesn't sound right. Okay, so first score of the game after a longish point and then we just see the final pass into the end zone yeah the player's right there and he just like he i think he may go to give him like a slap of hand pat on the back like it's all good and then i think everyone else eventually gets the message so that time gal were able to work through it quickly we did see though kind of the, the teams tend to be forcing towards that far sideline to kind of trap them with the wind force them to break the force into the wind and it's really tricky to do that because often you're showing the underside of the disc and as soon as the wind sees that, it's kind of the, the proverbial eyes light up and it's like, aha. Yeah, and especially, I mean, it depends on the height mismatch. There's some quite tall players on both teams. Um, I guess it just depends who's marking who on the dump. Uh, so we've got Unwin. That's Jagger, and then Jigar. just about slips that one through. Scott, back to Jagger. Oh, and that is a lovely lead pass. Fantastic, and a little knee slide for the score. Um, and that is... Uh, I think it's Reuven Shrek. Reuven Shrek, there we go. Looked like an 88. That font is quite hard to read. Yeah, uh, uh, you, you, to be fair, you would think, because Steve Jagger has been heavily involved in, with Ultimate Media for a long time, and with Lookfly as well, that he would know about making making kit numbers legible. Uh, anyway, I will I will continue, I will... I will stop my moaning. I'll put, I'll, I'll put it back in my lap, so to speak. <laughs> We're just seeing it there. That, to be fair, this is a lovely lead throw. Yeah. They call that, like, it's often called that the dad style backhand. Like, the, like the, you know what I mean? The backhand to the fore side. But yes. he sat that out beautifully. And yes. Shrek, I mean, he has to go to his knees to make the catch. But it caught the wind really nicely. And I think you have to say that Flash's O line dealt with that a lot more effectively than the Gowl O-line did. Definitely. But perhaps, you know, because they've been on the sideline, they've had the chance to see how the wind's affecting the disc a little bit mm -hmm. more as well. So they've kind of maybe had that little bit of extra scouting that you didn't get on the first point of the game. That is very true. And I think in the first point of any game, gosh, was that it? 
Uh, it, if it was in, I think it has since bounced out, so they will get it from the front of the end zone. But, I mean, yeah, a little bit of wind, just because if it was flatter, I mean, that might pin them very deep. As it is, you're still getting it on the end zone line with the chance to get your defense set. Oh, that is a nice break. That is reading the wind very well. And a lovely deep shot uh, through to Dislai. Didn't have anyone on him. I don't think uh, they were expecting it. Yeah, I mean, the Sorry. first the first little black backhand was so crafty, but that is pinched away by Steve Jaguer. Yeah, Gantz looking for Disla there, and uh, I think they thought it was going to be as easy as the other passes in that point, but um, we've got uh, Flash back on O. Lovely shot through the middle to Shrek. Oh, and you love to see it. That's Edwards with the score. Always mark your ladies deep. This is, the th I think, the idea of putting Edwards there is they're trying to drag that deep defender a out of the way so they've got more space. The defender begins to cheat up a little bit, cramp this space here. Can you back your throws to put it into stride? We'll see it again on the replay. Nice little, little bit of loft in it. Again, utilising the wind as w wind beautifully, and that is a, I mean, it's a perfect throw because the defender just has no shot of it at all. And Edwards, you know, take. Gonna leave, gonna leave people free deep. They're gonna take advantage of it. So what, I love to see it, especially because they're not necessarily using a tall player deep. And I think that's maybe why the deep defender cheats up a little bit, because they think, well, if this floats up, I back myself to win it in the air. But, yeah. but obviously, when it, if, if they don't get the air under it, and it's a bit flatter like it was there, you know, you, that all of a sudden that height mismatch doesn't come into play. Definitely. And I think we're gonna see a lot more of those kind of roll curve hucks um, from that kind of. Uh, far sideline. So Paul's drifting out. Uh, signal for a brick. It wouldn't surprise me actually to see people begin to pull from this side of the end zone, so from the near camera side of the end zone, mm. just so that if the wind does push it, it's still going to, you've got more chance of it landing in bounds. Oh, danger. <laughs> well read. Yeah, you can see what the wind is doing to these discs and oh, well kept in play. And that's another lovely roll curve puck uh, to Weidemann. Who just had no trouble reeling that in. I think it's interesting, after that first quite long point, both teams have sort they've of... A, they've adapted well. I yes. mean, that was slightly dicey because um, that passed through the middle. They threaded it nicely, but Hode was there to lay out to make it a little bit more difficult than perhaps it otherwise might be. And he doesn't get far away from it. But even though the player has to go to ground to make the catch, gets himself up and then has a think about it, decides to go it. And again, another beautiful hug to number 22, who makes it 2-2, uh, Henning Weidemann. So, you know, when the first point is, does drag on a little, you do get a feeling sometimes that, oh, this game might be, might be a little bit, it might be low scoring, it might be grindy, but both teams have adapted to the conditions remarkably quickly, it seems. Yeah could turn into a really tight game. I mean, it already is a tight game. <laughs> it could continue to be a tight so game. So it's good signs of staying that way. We've got Unwin fielding the pull. Sent us to Shrek. Oh, and we've got two deep cuts going. Neither of on. Well towed in uh, by Baker there. Sent us to Scott. Back to Unwin. Baker on the sideline. Oh, fakes the, the big round. Oh, and then throws a lovely IO. Was that in? That was an excellent bid. No, immediately just throwing the disc back into the end zone. I love the look, finding a way to get the, to you know bisect the pitch with that inside-out backhand, mm -hmm. but it didn't quite tail back in. And interestingly, after going zone at the start, that time much more of a match look from Gal. They're just poaching off one of the handlers to try and cause a little bit of traffic, and that perhaps means that the throw is more difficult than it might be. It's again that black hand blade over the top gets the job done, but. You know, interesting to see that, okay, maybe they thought that Flash got through that zone relatively capably, so they're going to try something different. Mm. Flash coming out with their own zone now. And uh, Gowell favouring this kind of floaty reset kind of roll curve. Seems to be working pretty well for them on the far sideline now. It's Distler. Distler in a bit of trouble. Oh, and a foot block. But a foul call. Yeah, maybe just hadn't quite released it. And if he can get his foot slightly back, maybe that's a block. I think he's engaged in the discussion with Shrek. Shrek's going to check it back in, actually. So evidently, 
nothing, no harm done there. But, you know, with these big backhands over the top, I think maybe what they're trying to do as well is to get a player on this side to kind of cheat up and try and get a bid on it. Mm. And if they're, then they're perhaps they're left out of position to exploit the space in behind. Very big force from Shrek, forces a turn. And uh, Goal looking a little bit frustrated as Flash had the disc uh, quite near their end zone, actually. This is one often it's very tempting. You want to put to put your tall players deep in the zone as can't quite score on the first pass. Oh, and it's just full. It was a, it was a great too. bid from uh, from Baker, was it? Yeah, who's only been playing for five years. What? Oh. Yeah, started playing pickup locally. This is his first frisbee kit. This flash kit. That is that is some strong work. First first kit at a Nash, at a World Championships. As that time, uh, Scott cleans up deep. Uh, come back to an earlier thought. Often it's tempting to put your tall players deep because you want an aerial matchup. But they've seen that Scott had good position, so he was able to get it deep, even though he's not the tallest player. And then means you can put someone big on the force and mm. cause a real problem with those resets. Oh, that is a big shot. Is it a score? Amazing. <laughs> Gosh, that really looked like a sort of last second desperate throw. The dump was marked out, but. There we go. Oh, that's perfectly weighted. It's perfectly weighted because, again, just they've got this slight blading, the slight roll curve in, not inside, outside in, edge on the disc, and they're stopping it kind of being pushed out the side mm. and kind of bringing it back in bounds. And they see that they've got the steps. It's very difficult when you're throwing down the sideline because obviously you're constrained by keeping it in bounds, mm. and whereas defender has no such constraint, so often you, you find that a player has to wait for it to come back in, and a defender can just go and snap it out of the sideline. But this is a beautiful throw. Yeah, it's Emma Jane Bailey to uh, Shrek again, or is that? Uh, Scott. Scott? It's difficult. It's, it's, it's difficult to tell. With the <laughs> Scott or Shrek? <laughs> One of the two. Either way. Really, really nice stuff there from Flash after the turn. Mm -hmm. Tell us in the YouTube comments which one it was. <laughs> yeah, please, do, please do correct us. It's always, it's always good to have a learning experience. Big force from Edwards there, and some excellent defence from Flash. But they get the little pop pass off. Flunts on disc, looking up field. It's like Flash of going match defence as well. Oh. Wow. And did, did Edwards get a hand on that, or did she just did she just do enough to put, to prevent the catch? Either way, good defensive work. Definitely. Love to see the ladies in an open tournament doing bits. Oh, give up! Well, that was it. Was it just popped up straight as soon as she went to catch it, and there was an opportunity for the second effort snag. Edwards was trying to clamp, uh, kind of clap catch around it as Threadshills kind of trying to sneak in right through the back door and get a hand on it. This is very close. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm not sure I could call that one either way. Like it looked like he might have got a, a hand to it, but whether or not he had to go through her to get that hand to it is kind of I think in situations clear. like that as well, where it's very close, sometimes contesting it and sending yes. it back is not a bad, contesting does not automatically mean that it was terribly spirited. That's true. Sometimes when it, it is just too close to call. Very true. And, uh, yeah, it's not often made that point. So we've got Eng quite close to the end zone, shakes the disc a bit. Uh, through to Hode. Slightly poachy look from Gaul, not a lot of options. So puts up a floater and well fielded by Shrek. Definitely got the height advantage there. It's, it, was, uh, it was tricky because High store, they had the poach on this sideline and couldn't quite find a way to break the mark to get it. And you could see the store count rising and these players will know that if you do have a high store count, the best thing to do is, you know, get rid of it. And if you can put a bit of air under it, give someone a chance to make the play. We'll see it again here on the replay. Ho tries to break the force. So the force really adjusts to come round to stop it. And then just, again, shows an awful lot of the underside of the disc to the wind. And I think it's Jaguar in the end who brings it down. Oh, I'm sorry. struggling a little bit with the flash numbers. I'm trying to work out things by like, by he's, I know that he's got, I've seen that he's got two knee braces. He had <laughs> meniscus surgery on one of those knees six weeks oh, ago. Yeah. Like, I can't imagine like, you know, fresh off, fresh off a, you know, relatively serious surgery coming to play a beach world championship as that's a great pull. It's a phenomenal pull from Scott, I think it was. Yes, yeah, so that's Kuka having to run to, uh, get it and uh, 
uh, yeah, just about managed to... Hang on, are there two 69s? Oh, this is very helpful. Oh, come on, guys. Okay, I'm going to imagine that the one in the actual kit is... Oh, no, hang on, he's Didi. Yeah. Oh, that, so that is Kuka, yeah. Okay, so I don't know who the guy in the blue shirt is. He shall remain nameless. We'll, we'll try and do some powers of logic and deduction. Okay, so we've got Disla on the Enzo 9, everyone else sprinting through. Oh, and just one of those high-pressure situations, and Gantz can't quite wrap his hands around it. Just try to sneak it through, and just uh, maybe a bit too much bit too much hot sauce? I don't know if what I don't know what if there is an Italian hot sauce that I should use. Um the Sardinian spice uh, of choice is saffron. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> they they grow. I think it's one of the few things they uh, grow here. Interesting. I'm learning I am learning stuff every day. Okay. Again they're trying to drag the drag those defenders deep out of the play. Up Ooh. line comes a little bit of bumpiness and I feel bad saying is you're making a meal of it, but then also you know, when players, I don't want to be like, oh, they're so old, you know. But, you know, sometimes a, 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 an, an effect does have more effect if you're uh, in, yeah, if your body is a bit, has a bit more wear and tear. Yes, definitely. So that is Shrek. And uh, just unfortunately, they hung for a bit too long. And uh, Bailey didn't quite have the, the height necessary. Oh, but that could be anybody's. So that's a nice D from Unwin. Yeah, we talked about before about trying to keep those, the, having the deep sit slightly under, knowing that if it's floaty, they can win the high matchup, and we saw it come into play there. It's a nice up line to Scott. He's got Bailey free in the end zone, but that was a distraction, and Baker snaffles a score. That is a pinpoint precise inside break. I mean, it's beautiful because it really zips through, and Flash are pulling away a little bit here. I know before the tournament they were perhaps slightly down about some of their chances because... You know, it's, it's a tough tournament. There are a lot of very good teams. They've only got 11 players on the roster, you know, and some of them, as we mentioned, are in various states of fitness, which is eight, not, not, not necessarily because they're old, but because, you know, people have surgery. We've come out of a pandemic, so keeping up with, keeping up with a fitness routine during that was a lot harder for some people than others, depending on whether you have to, whether you're shielding for certain people or whether you've got access to a lot, you know, to facilities and things like that. Mm -hmm and how much motivation you have after the pandemic affects your mental health is also a factor. Absolutely, I know that there are a lot of times when just getting out of bed felt like a win. So <laughs> the fact that these people can, uh, you know, they've come out in, and I must say that the majority of players, the overwhelming majority, they look, they look to be in excellent shape, like not necessarily like cut, if you know what I mean, but evidently if you, can, if you, if you, you know, you're fit enough to come and do a beach tournament yeah. in, in very hot weather now, with a, with hot sand underneath your feet as well, you know you've got to have a bit of you've got to have a bit of a good base level of fitness. Yeah, definitely. That's Kikol just trying to sneak a, a round break to Podorski, uh, but Flash have a chance to extend their lead. Yeah, just it kind of did the right thing, made that little letterbox to post the disc through, and then he just didn't close the hands in time. Mm, unfortunate. Oh wow. That is incredible. It went past so many people. And not a lot of celebration after that score. Just, just kind of dropping the disc, just, <laughs> plodding off. Just Eng just pointed to the handler. I think it's Jaguar again. He's been slicing and dicing this gal zone and he looks like he certainly looks like he's still got it fresh off fresh off that certain knee surgery. I mean full, full credit for just even giving it a go this so this soon after. Yeah. But because this here there's not a huge window, but he's just knowing that the yeah that that defender's po both defenders are kind of poaching towards the far side slightly, mm -hmm. and the defender who could get in the way there is distracted by I think it's Edwards on this near side, mm. keeping to keeping a close set of eyes on her, and that means that she has the space to kind of zip it past before he can get the defender can get his head turned around. Really good find there, and Flash again they're putting some distance in between themselves and their German opponents. I wonder if Gaul are going to bring out any new strategies to try and clamp down on this quite slick uh, flash offense. Gosh, that's another. Oh. Uh, it just, just about lands onto the tape afterwards. But still, chance to get the defense set. And especially from that end zone, the pulling from flash has been top notch. Mm -hmm. Some really pinpoint ones and some very like close to, close to pinpoint. 
Oh, that is a big throw. Is it too big? Oh! Just, it's this difficult bit where he turned his head around because he know, and he maybe just lost sight of it for a brief second and then couldn't quite get his hand set. Yeah, it's a bit of, bit of bad luck for, for Dumley there. And that is a fantastic throw, fantastic movement from Bailey to get open in the end zone. She is absolutely destroying this matchup. <laughs> the thing is that Gala, that, I mean, you can say that what throws are they asking? Excuse me, what throws are they asking Flash to make? And these are, you know, they're difficult cross field passes. But sometimes, you know, with every defense, there's going to be something that you'll give up, that you are, that you are risking giving up because it's just kind of, especially on beach, five, it's a big field for five. You know, are you, uh, what, can, do you have that throw in the ability? And that time, the low release, you could see the defender thinking about the bid and then just realizes, actually, it's just too, I just don't, I just do not have a shot on it. Mm -hmm. And why put myself through the, you know, why put myself on the ground when we don't need to? Or potentially risk making a dangerous bid. Yeah. You know, they look quite level. And now Flash is 7-2 up at half and they're going to be receiving to start the half as well. So this is going brilliantly, you know, Flash now getting another furious five out there for the next point. Maybe they were worried that we were going to be reporting back on all of their strategies to the other team, so they really downplayed <laughs> their <laughs> expectations. Yeah, but I mean, as soon as they cross the white lines, they are, they've, well, orange lines, I guess, they've been, they've looked very, very smart. So that's uh, the two signals for pick there, the official one and the unofficial one. So they're just going to take the, it's going to say the slow march to the brick mark. To be fair, I think any everything on sand's a bit slower. Yeah, very true. That's Jiguer in the centre of the pitch. Little shuffle backwards, make sure he's in line with the brick mark. And an immediate long shot goes to Shrek. And just beautifully weighted. I mean, it looks to me like the message at half time for, for, for Flash was was more of the same. And, you know, <laughs> why not? In the, uh, it was in the Young Legends game. Uh, the game before the lunch break, we saw them immediately hammer it off the brick mark. Oh, yes. And then this time, you know, it's not, it's not, maybe it doesn't have the style and pizzazz of a hammer, but it's quite a classy throw, that one, just leading the receiver deep. Mm. And again, this is why good pulling is important, not only because it puts the defense in a bad position, sorry, the offense in a bad position, mm. but if you pull out a bounce from the brick mark, yes, you get a chance to get the defense set, but you're giving away the field position, you're giving away the fact that it's central as well, you're giving players time to get into position offensively as well, to kind of properly communicate what a strategy will be. Mm -hmm. Everything set up with the appropriate spacing. And Flash that time just absolutely pounced on it. Yeah, I'd, I'd really like to see some more kind of forcing under defense looks from Gaul um, over the next few points. Yeah, really try and make Flash matriculate their way down the pitch. <laughs> matriculate. It's, uh, there was an old NFL commentator who used to say that uh, there, they were matriculating the ball down the field. I can't think who it is off the top of my head, and it's going to annoy me now. That is a very interesting use of the word matriculate. I know, it's because obviously it's very much not what, not in its original. Mm. But I kind of like the fact that you, it is kind of graduating its way slowly oh, and working God. working towards the, the, the goal at the end. Okay, so as the goal player percolates his way up the pitch. Hey! Tell you what, I don't mind that actually. <laughs> Especially if they go, they, they go small ball, so to speak, percolating their way down is quite nice. Great pressure from Edwards there, forcing that, uh, forcing that drop. And I think it was quite low as well, so not the easiest of catches. So Flash with another chance. Oh, and what looked like a hand block from Distler. Uh, a little bit of redemption there for the earlier drop. Yeah, the mark is quite close, but evidently she cares, you know, thinks that there's nothing untoward there. Just, just got the better of me. They've got Distler. Oh, lovely shot through the middle of the uh, kind of zone you look there. Every other pass he is at the moment. Him and the other handler, Till, working it between them very nicely. That's Damley on disc, looking through the cup. Back to Distler. Till again. Oh, nice shot up the pitch to Damley. Frotsche, back to Dissler. On the end zone line, Flash have uh, made their way to match. Oh, not a lot of options here, still count is rising. Gosh, I'm 
can't believe that wasn't a stall out. I was gonna like so often, <laughs> so often we see stall outs and there's no way that was 10 seconds. That felt like at least 12 seconds. So yeah. good to see that actually, you know, maybe a 10 second stall out was 10 seconds for a change. Well, slight sand delay there, and that is a very high disc. Oh, <laughs> a little bit of a freestyle from uh, Jiguer there, just batting the disc, and a timeout called. This has been a relatively long point, and it is very hot. Yeah, both sides have one timeout to use a game, and you know maybe thinking that a break would really kill the game off. Mm. Good opportunity to use it. Oh my, honestly, catch your D's, please, Steve. <laughs> like that was that was there to be. That not only was that you know wouldn't have pretend, would have prevented him having to do it at the second attempt, and you know because it could have been the, the receiver lurking to to pinch it away. Yeah. But also, if he catches that quickly, maybe they can get the offense going. You know, before the defense is already in position, and they might not have to use the timeout. Maybe he was just a bit tired. I mean, so am I, and I'm not even playing. <laughs> the thing, like, it, like I think it is underrated that the sun does it does take it out of you being in these hot conditions. I mean, we have been sitting in the shade. Yeah, I mean, and, and, <laughs> and, and I am always tired. But I mean, even just kind of trotting over to use use the facilities or go to the, or visit the bar in the TD desk, like I, I was struck by it is. It is very hot out there, despite, mm. the, I mean, I must admit that I'm not completely au fait with the weather patterns of Sardinia, but... It's hot all year round, basically. <laughs> yeah, it is, despite the fact that it is the end of, it is the end of September, it is, it is pretty scorching out here. Mm. I mean, it must be in the 30s, if not the very high 20s, I'd have thought. Yeah, I, I would say high 20s for sure. I'll tell you what, I could probably get a weather app, couldn't I? No, this is this is going to annoy me now, so I'm actually going to double check. Go okay, so, for it. Sorry, everyone. Only the best uh, investigative reporting from LTTV. It says 28 degrees, which there we go. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, I, I have no evidence to the contrary, so I'll take it. But yeah, but that is hot, and the wind is. It's not. A, it's strong, but it's not necessarily a particularly cooling breeze. Oh yeah, no. That sometimes not. you do get coming off the sea. Just a reminder to anyone watching on YouTube to uh, make sure you feed the algorithm by leaving <laughs> a comment, liking, subscribing, um, ringing the bell to be notified whenever we go live with new content. Um, it really helps us out and helps us bring Ultimate to more people. I am told that it is frequently called all that good stuff. <laughs> all that good, good stuff. I think there's been a pick maybe. There is some sort of stoppage evidently because uh, Hode came charging down this near side channel, and there was uh, it was the match up there that is uh, Fletchell against Bailey, maybe, and they were not they were just stood still. So evidently something has happened there. Maybe a violation. Someone moving before the disc was checked back in. Could could well be. Right, so we've got Flash in a kind of horizontal step up, uh, set up immediately to Baker. Oh, I'm really well caught there uh, by, I think that's Scotland. Um, so he's on the sideline now, side now surveying his options. Oh, and a big old hammer. Unfortunately, Jiguer not quite got the speed on sand to uh, to reel that one I in. I mean, it would have to be like a, a Mjolnir level hammer to get, to get it all the way to hang for long enough and have the distance. I mean, credit for trying, but didn't quite come off that time. What do they say about the conservation of greatness? After very uh, every good catch, you should, you know, do a kind of a steady throw, because Scotland did really well to spring off the sand, That's and then true. just couldn't quite, just couldn't make, couldn't make the most of it. Slightly static upfield, uh, Frutcher and Disla kind of working it between themselves a bit. Um, there's not much happening upfield. Ah, oh, there we go. That's a nice undercut from Dumley. And Distal again. Oh, little bit of uh, contact there. Maybe a call. Yeah, I think Baker was trying to sneak sneak round the outside, but evidently, even though he may have got the disc, too much contact there. So good to see that it was uncontested, and we're quickly back in play. Oh, that's uh, that happened. Yeah, I mean, again, it's showing the underside of the disc to the wind. The wind's trying to push it out the sideline. So the defense, so the receiver's kind of stopped because they obviously they can't go out of bounds. And then Hode's kind of clattered him a little bit from behind. Yes. Maybe he just lost his footing and went in harder than he expected. Yeah, quite possibly. I think this is going to be uncontested as well. It looks like some people people on the side don't have opinions, but... And that might yeah. be a little bit of a get out of jail free because, yes. because the wind might have pushed that out the sideline. Yes. I mean, he might well have been able to, to reel it back in, but definitely not after being hip-checked by... Uh, uh, who is that? Hode. 
So there is someone on the sideline offering some sort of perspective or maybe rules advice. I'm just going to see it again. Yeah, there's definitely a fair bit of contact, but I suppose the question is... Would it have been caught? Certainly, I think he would have had a chance at it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in though you give the benefit of the doubt, So just maybe working out where everyone was, what the stool count is. I'm not sure. Or maybe people just need a breather. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. It is also relatively humid. Like, even with the wind, it's not the easiest air to kind of move through. And you can kind of see it in the wide view shots as well, that the, you've got those clouds over the mountains in the in the not too far distance. So, yeah, it is. It is. It, there is a mugginess in the air. Right next to a lagoon as well. You can see it shining in the sun in the background. So I'm hearing a call of let's carry on from uh, Stig Unwin on the far sideline. Let's play ultimate. Yes, that's what we're here for. Okay, the disc is back in on the far sideline. Oh, was that? Okay, that was up. This back on disc to Dumley. The video's looking a little bit sketchy. It's not as easy as perhaps Gal would like it. Yeah. I mean, it's not the easiest conditions either. Oh, and that's a nice up the line cut. But instead, a swing. Oh, another great bid from Hode. Just up to his feet. Just looking into the end zone. Oh, and that's a lovely through the middle shot to Till. Really, really nice. Just lots of people going left and right. He stood where he was. There we go. Taking advantage of the fact that Hode was on the floor for a long time. So eventually, if you can just get that poached player into space and find them, especially that close to the end zone, mm. it's good to go. Uh, the other thing I like to do often if your defender's on the floor because they've overcommitted for a bid is to realise, OK, rather than, rather than kind of clear out deep and wait for, wait for the space and maybe give another defender a chance to come in and help, mm. is, actually, is actually use that opportunity to maybe give go a bit more, keep the disc moving and, you know, make, the, make perhaps the safer passes where there's not a defender in close. Yeah, very smart. But that time, just just sat in the zone, in the end zone and in the kind of the defensive zone as well. Just just waiting for players to kind of clear out of the space, and then eventually it feels like you feel great because you've got open without necessarily doing much. Because it's it's but but it's good reading of the play to know that okay they're going this way, they're going this mm -hmm. way. That's that defender's going to, and then eventually you just say oh actually, you run the mental math in your head. I can just sit here. Yes. <laughs> I always like that when you play. It's like, oh, do I need... No, I'm good where I am. The that is I'm the best course of action for me right now. The thing I was always told about if you're, you know, if you're playing against a zone defence is you want to be marked by two people mm. or by no people. Yes. If you're marked by no people, then you're not marked by anybody and you're free. And if you're marked by two people, well, someone else is going to be free. Oh, that was a great upline cut from Scott, but uh, disc a bit too far in front of him, although he did certainly make a valiant effort for it. And some nice cuts so far from Gaul. We've got Müller on disc, dumps back to Fröcke, back to Müller. Handlers just working it between themselves at the moment. Oh, oh, that's so unfortunate. Stechbart just bouncing off his hands. Scott back on disc. Oh, he's got a couple players deep. Bit too low, unfortunately, for Shrek. I mean, he's absolutely lasered it. It would have been <laughs> the most spectacular of plays if Shrek was able to bring it down. And to be fair, if any, regardless of David, like who anyone bringing that down would have been amazing because it was it had a real rip on it, and it never really got more than a couple of feet off the ground. Mm. So to get that low and get underneath it while still kind of maintaining form was would have been incredibly difficult. And, but it didn't work out, but they have at least got some field position back. <laughs> yes. The old hack and D. Definitely a valid strategy. All right, Stechbart hanging on to that one. Upfield to Muller. Not a lot of options. Oh, yeah, tricky throw to make, and uh, Kukul was moving pretty fast, so not, an, not the easiest catch to make. Difficult, because they're trying to get the, trying to find that space, but with the with the break back, the break inside out backhand, and it's so difficult to get the right kind of arcing trajectory and flick with the wrist so that, it, so that it's still going to lead them into space rather than being behind them. That's a lovely upwind throw from Unwin to uh, 
Zon. A little bit of a foul there from Stechbart, perhaps. Oh, Stechbart is calling the foul. Interesting. Um, I slap of hands there. Good, getting it back at play. We had a call earlier that took a little bit of time, although I don't think it was it was mean spirited at all. This time, yeah, off we go. Nice and back in play quickly. Absolutely. Oh, Unwin absolutely streaking up the pitch. That is a big disc for a small man. And he gets it anyway. <laughs> Amazing. Good body positioning there because you know, forced the defender to go up a little bit earlier. And then when he had committed, he realised he had the time to just read it. So that one is wobbly and it is swiped out of the sky. Yeah, we've been seeing a lot of good kind of roll curvy throws, but unfortunately that one didn't look like it had enough on it to uh, to get too far. Uh, so we have Muller on disc, Stechbart. Swings across. Looking up fields, cutters cutting into the same space. Oh, that's unfortunate. Pickle going to ground, but uh, I think he sort of rolled on the disc there. It just kind of got away from him. It's strange because it felt the disc was right there to, and it just got all around it and not actually at it at yes. all. <laughs> That's Unwin to Scott. It's knocking on the end of the door. Oh, oh! And just bouncing off the hands of Bailey. Credit to uh, credit to Damley, I think it is, perhaps, who was, he was, uh, who was alert enough to say, oh, no, that it's not it's not gone to hand. We can... But swipe this one away as we get the second time out of the point. Yeah, and uh, good catching of D's, and I think that's a timeout call. Is that the second one in this point? Yeah, second of the point, because yes. uh, Flash called one uh, on earlier in this point. After the game was kind of, it started a bit slowly, and then it picked up at quite a pace, and now it has descended a bit, and often this, especially on sand, where it takes more out of you. You feel that mm. if a point has a couple of turnovers, Generally, that means that there's a few more turnovers and it's difficult to get free. It's difficult to kind of muster the energy to cut the full effectiveness. Especially since we were talking earlier about, you know, conditioning. Um, and actually, the more tired you are, the harder it is for you to make decisions quickly. Like, your brain also needs sugar to, to function, right? So the more tired you are, the more prone you are to, you know, maybe make throwing to the wrong option or, you know, it just longer points breed longer points. Uh, essentially what I'm going for there. No, 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 I, I, get, I know exactly what you mean. I, I fully agree with you, as you say. The, it, the point descends, it grinds, and there is certainly an art to, to, uh, to playing your best ultimate when you're not at 100% fitness, 100% conditioning, when you're tired. Certainly I've played with people where we'd had training sessions where the first, like, we wouldn't actually do real disc skills until we just basically, until we done the most intensive warm-ups and everyone was knackered and it was like okay now we're going to try and place an ultimate because the point was trying to drill in the drill into effect there are going to be times when you are out there and you are pretty much out on your feet and you are gassed mm. and how can you adapt maybe whether that's kind of finding that fortitude to really muster up the energy for another cut or maybe it's thinking okay we don't have the energy we used to how can we adapt to play around this you know maybe we're looking at switching a bit more so we're forcing players to run a bit less mm. Like, how are we? Can we be more efficient with the way we're creating and utilizing space? That's interesting. Because I would have thought the the solution to kind of like, oh, okay, we're we're kind of tired in this point would be to encourage more kind of strength and you know doing more sprints, so you, you kind of delay that tiredness. But then again, I suppose there are some points which you're going to be tired no matter how good you, how fit yeah, you are. Especially, I mean, thinking about, for example, the end of a long tournament weekend or. So when we get to the last games on Wednesday here, mm. there are going to be people who are, you are going to be a little bit gassed. Yeah, whose uh, hip replacements are getting tired. And there is actually someone who's had a hip replacement this year, so I'm not being, oh, I'm not being ageist by saying a that. Good, I mean, more power to them if you can, you know, take your, because I mean, we're seeing it in, you know, look at Andy Murray at the moment when he had the hip resurfacing mm, and true. he hasn't found his best. So the fact that you can, you know, maybe you not, don't have the athletic prowess, but you're used to, but you can find ways to adapt and work around it. So we've got Gaul setting up in a horizontal look, three handlers, two cutters. That's Viraman under. Not really liking what he sees, but gets the disc off and Viraman on disc. Spinning round. Dumps it off. Oh, and that is a nice shot. Unfortunately, it's uh, not going to anyone. Yeah, Scott just playing, almost like he's playing a little bit of backline <laughs> there. Just like, just a little tap on and just, 
like almost like a basketball player, like going for a like trying to kind of kind of step back for a three and just just like just just ever so gently tap it on. <laughs> and the, yeah, thankfully for him, there's no one there to to scoop it up because he got enough on it, and there was no one there. And now Shrek will bring it in from the front of that end zone line, and it would not surprise me to see them look deep. Oh, excellent take by Scott there. It was quite a high disc. Fakes the deep, thinks about swinging it to the other side of the pitch, jumps off to Unwin instead. Yeah, taking the dunk there was the right option because there was there were a lot of players close to the disc and actually you just need to play it around a little bit so you get players going deep. Oh, that is a very casual one-handed grab. Not necessarily in. There we go. Bring it to the front of the end zone and a fantastic score by Bailey. It's really tricky when, as a defender, you've got two offensive players there because you've got to weigh up. Do I get the mark? I want to make any throw that needs to be made as difficult as possible. But if they do get the throw off, well, a player's going to be free. Or do you say, well, I'll take the runner and do my best at marking them out. But actually, there's going to be no one on the force. So it's difficult. So the throw can go up and you can just be out of position for it because there's no one there. Often I like to think about taking the runner, mm. partly because defenders then coming in to help out, yeah. they've got, they, they don't have as far to go. Mm -hmm. But it's always that, it is always difficult, and especially if you've got players who can just move the disc so quickly, yeah. you've got a split second to make a decision. And you know, if sometimes it feels like you're between a rock and a hard place. Yeah, it's a very damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of situation. It's, uh, but yeah, I agree with you. I would, I would always go for the runner. But on beach, I mean, I suppose it's, it's yeah. it adds a whole new dimension to it. Yeah, on beach, the, like, the, the temptation to do as little running as possible is, <laughs> is good. And I think, like, you see this from a lot of team, a lot of nations that play a lot of beach. It's not necessarily about they are necessarily fitter, but it's about they know how to conserve their, their energy and be a bit more efficient with what they're doing. So we've got quite a tall line on for Gowell here, or maybe I'm just looking at uh, Kuka. That is some snag by Distler that he always had no right to make because he's he's kind of jumping out, the disc's behind him. It's a spectacular grab and a spectacular bid as well. And a foul call on uh, Ian Scotland there. Looks like it's uncontested. You're seeing now why I think beach is often conducive to perhaps some of the older age brackets because it's easy to throw yourself around a little bit like Ode does there Absolutely. because you know you're getting a, a slightly cushier landing. And I think that's a bit that he didn't need to make, but hey, why not? It looks good. You're getting streamed by LTTV. You might as well put on a bit of a show. Could not agree more. So we've got only a couple minutes left. Uh, in fact, the, the soft cap has now gone, so it's a game to 10. So if Flash put this in, yeah, just trying to work out whether it had gone during this point or before the previous point. Oh, no, it almost certainly is, is finished point, add one. No, you're right. Oh, that's a very low throw. And looks like there'll be a bit of a discussion about whether or not it was up. I mean, it's a sneaky one because he's seeing the seeing Ho kind of streak into this space and he's probably squared up so we can get out in so we can get that oh, I nearly knocked something over there <laughs> by demonstrating which no one can see but he's squared up so he's really sneaking that through and it's different like it's gone at such speed you didn't quite get a great shot of it no yeah it looks like he, he boxed the camera out as well uh, so it'll be contested yeah better remove that because that way we can't tell either way if it was up or down and then yes. go back <laughs> Joking, of course, and that's obviously not what he was trying to do. It just, just so happy, just so played out that way. There quite a few cuts going over to the open side. Swings around to Baker. Pick on the far side of the field. Suppose we'll get back into position. Oh, Feels like the wind has kicked up an extra gear as well in the last 30 seconds or so. Certainly, I'm feeling it a bit, a bit more strongly on the back of the neck. It's quite gusty as well. It's not that steady. Oh, Hoax just on the floor all over the place today. Oh, and a nice score. Just again, one of those little threading the needles uh, to Edwards. It's Louise Edwards, Louise yeah. Louise Edwards, yeah. And there is slaps of hands. I think maybe that's a little bit prematurely. I think they're signalling that, yeah, just cap going on on that point. So it'll be game to 11, I believe. I believe so too. There we see the check in. Scotland finds Ho to once more is, you know, throwing himself to the ground as if it's as if he lives there. I mean, I feel like he spent more time kind of in the sand than on the sand, if you know what I mean. 
<laughs> He's becoming one with the sand. He's a one with the sand. Yes. One, but, hey, that's the that's the that's the good thing about playing on sand <laughs> is that you can do that, and it's not and it's not as punishing for you. You know, this is not, that's not an age thing. Like, it is it is just easier to lay out on sand generally than it is than it is on grass. Although you do have often the problem with then get coming up with a mouth of sand. Oh yeah. Which is which I must say is incredibly annoying. Yes. But you you, know, you kind of you learn to live with it a little bit as well. <laughs> Hope that you've got water on the sidelines so you can wash your mouth out and off you go. Uh, it's kind of shorter. We haven't seen that many pulls going in that direction, really. They've all been on, on our left. Oh, well taken down by the Flants. The Flants? Just Flants. The, the <laughs> well, Ralph Flants. <laughs> Flants means plant in German, so in my head I'm like, oh. that's a noun that needs an article. <laughs> oh, OK, this is good. I'm learning. They've also got a player, uh, number 72 is Marcus Knobloch. Who it's, which is garlic, isn't it? Knoblauch, yeah, it's garlic, yeah. Oh, do you, is it a hard K? Kno yeah, always. Oh, interesting. It's good to know. Pronounce every letter in German. That is a floater. Oh, well read and well brought down. And that, unless there is a call. No, that's all good. That is game to flash. Excellent box out there from Christian Sonner. I feel like we haven't necessarily called his name as much as we've called some others, but that time the disc is floaty and it's... You know, that's always dangerous when you can allow a, a defender to close in. But you see there, he's got into position nice and early. The defender's desperately trying to kind of reach back and put that arm over the top, but keeps the position, makes a two-handed snag above his head, and Flash, with a very, I don't want to say dominant, but a, a convincing a professional <laughs> victory. I mean, they, yeah. you know, they it, at the start it felt like, you know, that first point took a few minutes and, oh, this might... This might be, the game might be a bit of a slog for both sides, but actually they found that that little bit of class and quality and some of those throws were pinpoint accurate, mm -hmm. really threading the needle. And full credit to Flash, they've, uh, yeah, good value for the 11-3 victory in the end. Yeah, definitely. Like, it, it didn't necessarily feel like it was a kind of one-sided sort of stamping. Uh, it, it, there were lots of hard forward points, um, and we're just seeing the... Uh, some highlights on the screen now. It's interesting because it, it, it wasn't like, oh, Flash had all of the disc all of the time. You know, the, there were really nice passages of possession for Gal, but it just felt like so often they just did not have that that last finishing touch that mm. they needed perhaps to get it into the end zone or to find that, you know, the, 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 the narrow window pass that, that Flash were able to kind of sneak through and sneak past. Certainly, and I think there are a lot of um, kind of floaty dump throws which Flash managed to come down with, which you know, if they'd had they gone the other way, um, would uh, would have been a bit different. Um, yeah, thanks to everyone who's watching on our YouTube channel. If you are there, hello. We can just go in and reading back through the uh, reading back through the chat as well. Uh, kind of tried to cheat Scotland has in, yeah okay I don't remember that yeah a little bit of freestyle yeah well, hammer's always the best option I like that yes. I like that comment always. as well and yes indeed WGGMBUCC bit of a mouthful is the world great grandmasters beach ultimate club championships and it's a pleasure to be here for old TV bringing you coverage not just all today but all the way through till Wednesday as well but the second running of this tournament three years on from the first and it's it's an utter privilege and a delight to be here Ali it really is lovely Benji I couldn't agree more um, so we have one more game for you today, which is Courier Island versus... Uh, versus Borderline from the US slash Canada. Yes. The, the border, appropriately. <laughs> I think that's why they're called Borderline, I, I, and they're not just huge Madonna fans, or they might, or they might also be that as well. I haven't we asked them. We will try and find out uh, before, <laughs> before the next game, which will be at 5pm uh, local time. So do tune in for that. Uh, but for now, we will leave you... Um, so from... Vila Simius, I've been Ali Thomas, joined by the effervescent Benji Reese. See you next time. We are a group of ultimate players, coaches and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make Ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Guys and subscribe, Ultimate TV, the best in the world. Become a member and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond.